we get that Caspa can run at 3,000 transactions per second for more than a thousand years with full nodes running on a hundred bucks worth of hardware and requiring less than a hundred gigabyte of storage. What's up, Crypto Crew, and welcome back, or if this is your first time, I'm Captain Crypto Might, actively escaping the matrix, scoping out the crypto ocean, so if you like your odds, get on the boat, stay up to date, thumbs up, and join the hunt. Into the boat! Crypto Crew, Caspa is still consolidating at the making of this recording, but all signs are are pointing to a massive breakout sooner rather than later. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. We've got Marathon Digital mining Caspa over other proof of work coins next to Bitcoin. We've got Grayscale and hedge funds starting to invest into Caspa. We've got Casplex. We've got the Crescendo Fork taking it to 10 blocks per second. And you're bearish on Caspa right now? If you can't hold, you're never going to be rich, especially in crypto. Fundamentally, nothing has changed for Caspa. Caspa is still a rock solid cryptocurrency that has the potential to one day overthrow or at least be an alternative to the current failing fiat system. And on top of that, Caspa is a digital asset. And like all assets, you need to protect your Caspa. That's why on this channel, we will encourage you to store your Caspa offline on a cold storage. Our personal favorite is the Tangent Wallet, plug and play. Great way to practice self-custody and in our opinion, the most affordable option out there. So if you wish to order your Tangent Wallet today, you can get 10% off, link in the description box below. Thanks so much for your consideration and support in advance. And may the Lord Jesus Christ bless you all. Caspa is built different from the rest of crypto. Scalability, speed, security, decentralization define this project. I think Caspa is about to surprise a lot of people in this upcoming bull market. Here's part two of Caspa researcher Shai Viborski's interesting breakdown at Mining Disrupt 2024, where Shai took the stage to challenge everything we thought we knew about proof of work. And in this part, he will focus not only the difference with proof of stake, but how Caspa achieves revolutionary status and can even be superior than proof of stake. Listen closely, Crypto Crew. We get that Caspa can run at 3,000 transactions per second for more than a thousand years with full nodes running on a hundred bucks worth of hardware and requiring less than a hundred gigabyte of storage. I just want to point out some other ways in which Caspa is decentralized. So one way is it, it is fair launched. There were no pre-allocations and no pre-mine. Each and every Caspa was mined fairly. Even when we had to ask miners to stop mining two weeks after the network fell down, we had to mine to ourselves just to kickstart the network. And we mined to a, to a side wall at 11 million Caspa. And then we had a community poll. And following the community poll, I personally burned 11 million Caspa, just so that it would be very clear that we haven't mined ourselves anything uncompetitively. We suggested maybe use it for development. The community wanted to see to watch it burn, so we burned it. And by the way, it was very fun. It was about $5,000 at the time, and now it's about, I think, almost $2 million. So yeah. So let's talk about performance. One conventional wisdom is that proof of work can scale. I guess you heard it a lot. This conventional wisdom is wrong. Uh, it was disproven before Caspa by several uh, other protocols that managed to scale throughput using some concessions. Uh, but GhostDAG, it scales as well as proof of work without any concessions to the security or the confirmation times. And we can see on our test net that we can run at 10 blocks per second while churning out 3,000 transactions per second, confirming 3,000 transactions per second, where the mempool queue can go up to 600,000 transactions. When Bitcoin nodes got to about 400,000, they started to crash and fail. Now, they already fixed these issues, but uh, I'm just pointing out that our code is robust enough to handle very, very large transaction queues. And now you can ask, okay, but what kind of hardware do I need to run a node on this insane throughput? And the answer is about 100 bucks. So we've seen people run Caspa nodes, full Caspa nodes with, um, with the full 
full uh, throughput of 3,000 TPS, 10 blocks per second on Raspberry Pis. You don't need these uh, POS-like exp expensive validators. You don't need a $15,000 machine just to be a validator. Anyone can grab the old PC that they're not, they are not using and run a full node. Another conventional wisdom about high throughput system is general that they require a lot of storage. And this is also wrong, because now we have the technology to remove all these storage requirements. We use a, a combined uh, approach of pruning, and pruning allows us essentially to chop away all of the uh, sufficiently old blocks and most of the sufficiently, sufficiently old headers. It wasn't our invention. It, uh, it is based on the mining in logarithm space uh, protocol by uh, Kaya Zindros and Leonardis, um, but it was adapted to DAG by our Orin Newman. This allows us to essentially save only a fixed amount of ledger data. And one application for this is for smart contracts. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get into this, but the point is that you can do a lot of stuff which is very impressive, but much easier than how you'd have to do it in slower systems. The conventional wisdom says that proof of work is very energy wasteful, and I said the conventional wisdom is wrong because of the ASIC-friendly algos that lead to CAPEX-heavy mining. It means that most of the expenditure of a miner would go for the hardware itself and not the energy. So if we look at a hundred million dollars worth of CASPA hardware compared to other proof of works, we see that it requires much less, much less wattage. So to secure the same amount of capex, you need to spend a lot of less energy. And this also has the decentralizing effect that people with access to cheaper energy get much, much less of an advantage. If you have access to, um, to cheap, cheap, cheaper energy, it doesn't mean that you drive other techs non-competitive. And in the future, we hope to see optical mining, which would make the mining even more capex heavy. And cheap to use goes without saying. If you have more transaction, you need to pay less per transaction for the same total security budget. And in the world of validating compensation, there is also a conventional wisdom that fees only kicks in when the network is congested. This is not true. Essentially, the network becomes, the fee market becomes active well before the network is congested. And another consequence is that there is no bidding war dynamic, like in Bitcoin or in chains, when each one raises by a Satoshi. Here it wouldn't help. You need your, the amount of fee that you put to actually represent the quality of service that you're hoping to get, which breeds a much, much healthier fee market. And my last point is adaptiveness. Adaptiveness uh, is a property so exotic that people tend to not even think about it. But if you think about it, what happens when the internet improves? When the, the network improves, the protocol still work at the same time because they assumed some bound in the latency of the network. And there are even some suggestions that you can't override this. You always have to assume a, a bound in the network latency, which has a large margin of error. Like if you know that your network performs at a latency of two seconds, then you have to assume that it's about 10 seconds. But Sompolinsky and Satan found a way to make a protocol that actually reacts to the network time, to the network delay, and scales itself. And this is what we call the Dag Knight protocol. And it's soon to be implemented, right? Now it exists only in theory, but it just removes the bound on latency, and this has two very, very far-reaching consequences. As I said, you eliminate the margin of error. So instead of operating at a speed that you feel comfortable would be suitable most of the time, you just work as fast as you can, knowing that if the network conditions deteriorate, then instead of sacrificing uh, security, you would just see the speed go down to adapt itself to the worst network conditions. And the the second one is that the speed, the reactiveness of the network will improve automatically as network conditions improve. We have this conjecture. We can't prove it yet, but we have a lot of reasons to believe that self-scaling is only possible for proof of work, because essentially it follows by the fact that in proof of stake you have deterministic finality, and what allows us to get this property is to model correctly the fact that finality in proof of work in 
any proof of work is always subjective. Like in Bitcoin, each merchant decide how many blocks they want to wait because this gives them the confidence they feel comfortable with. And once you model this, you can create pot protocols that you couldn't before. And this seems like a necessary feature to get self-scaling like Dagnite. And if this is indeed true, this has this amazing consequence that not only proof of work is as performant as proof of stake, but proof of work can actually provide reactiveness, which is faster than the theoretical best reactiveness a proof of stake network could ever have, which I think is amazing. Crypto crew, Casper is revolutionary because of its tech and the ability to solve the blockchain trilemma. Casper is truly one of a kind on this current crypto ocean. Casper is also evolutionary as Casper continues to defy the odds on this crypto ocean, setting a new standard for what crypto could potentially be living out the path that Bitcoin carved out over a decade ago. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Let us know your thoughts on Shaivi Borsky's talk about proof of work, about Casper, and what Casper will be in the not so distant future in the comment section below. Stick around. Fix your mind before you get to the grind. And with that said, let's continue to escape the matrix. Let's continue to be on the lookout for the next big thing here on the crypto ocean. Grow in grace and let's make some crypto waves. Say I.